Well, welcome back. The pandemic pet boom pays off for Petco, the company beating expectations with $1.4 billion in reported revenue for the second quarter that was up 19% from a year earlier. Now the company announcing its subscription pup box is expanding to include dogs at all life stages. Joining me right now is the CEO of Petco. He is the CEO and chairman, Ron Coughlin. And Ron, it is great to have you this morning. Thanks very much for being here. Congratulations to you. What success you've been seeing. And ever since you went public, it only uh, accelerated a number of analysts upgrading your stock. Tell us where growth comes from in the coming five years at Petco. Thanks for having me, Maria. And uh, I hope Dusty is doing well. Uh, yeah, it's been a, uh, a great run. Uh, if you look at the category, the category is growing, projected to grow about 8% this year. So the momentum has continued into 2021. And really, we're really well positioned because we're unique. We can, we're the only company that can really help um, pet parents on a holistic basis. 50% of pet parents say that they want a one-stop shop. And we have vet, we have grooming, we have training, we have great food. And we bring it together both on e-commerce as well as brick and mortar. And what we've seen is a return to brick and mortar in this environment, which has just been great for our business. And we picked up over a million customers last quarter, which is just fantastic. That is fantastic. And thanks for mentioning, Dusty. You also have a foundation, the Petco Foundation, and that's why you were able to find me my beautiful puppy, Dusty, that's who right. I love so much. And then you became my incredible hero. You say about 11 million new pets were brought into homes in 2020, Ron. Americans spent more than $103 billion on pets last year alone, up from $97 billion in 2019. You're calling these pandemic pets furry annuity. Explain that because I think the analyst community on Wall Street is looking at your specific offering, enabling Petco to grow faster than the overall industry because of your product set. Yeah, actually, I got my, uh, my latest share report yesterday and we gained share once again. You know, the furry annuity concept is very simple. There were those who said that this pet boom, 11 million last year, would be a one year and then you'd have a difficult lap. But what I talk about is the furry annuity because they need to be groomed, they're going to need to be trained, they're going to need veterinary, they're going to need food for the next decade. So in some ways, it's like the baby boom that happened post-World War II, but this is just the pet version of it. And we think we're really well positioned to take advantage of it. And the numbers speak for themselves, 20% last quarter, 30% on a two-year basis. And that momentum has continued into Q3. There's also a report out of Credit Suisse saying that 50% of the company's portfolio is insulated from online and mass channels, and more than 70% of its merchandise is owned exclusive, making it less dependent on widely distributed brands. That's a real differentiation as well. Yeah. If you look at our merchandise, we've worked really hard to have it be own brands and exclusive brands that we work with vendors to develop. At the same time, we have services like training, like grooming, like veterinary care that um, those players don't have, the big mass players don't have, the big online players don't have. And then from a longer term standpoint, we're doing the fastest vet network build out in history. We're up to 155 veterinary hospitals and we committed to putting 72 down in the year 2021 and we're on track. Amazing. Ron, congrats on the growth. And let me just say, Dusty, thanks you so much. She <laughs> liked Texas, but she loves New York being with me. She's a real patriot. Thank you, Ron. Great to see you this morning.